Ryanair posting its weakest annual earnings in four years and warning investors that profits could fall some more. The company's CEO, Michael O'Leary, joins us to talk about that and so much more. You want to start on, uh, on news that's a little more tepid than where we may be going? What's going on here? Fares in Europe are terrible, which is great for our business. We're booming. Traffic is growing 9%, but we are selling more and more $10 airfares across Europe this summer. That will continue. More airlines will disappear. Uh, the consolidation process... More airlines will disappear. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're going to go out of business or because they're going to get bought? Because yeah, they're going to go out of business. You know, the guys who can't uh, hedge their fuel as oil prices are rising back over $75 a barrel. I mean, you see Thomas Cook over the weekend. The credit card companies are beginning to hold their cash payments. Hmm. So it's just part of the consolidation. It happened here in the States six, eight, ten years ago, and it's happening in Europe so now. It doesn't say something about the economic conditions where you're operating. It says something about the competitive landscape. It's a bit of both. I mean, Brexit certainly hasn't helped the UK consumers booking later. There's a lot of uncertainty in the UK. The German market is characterized by huge overcapacity because Lufthansa bought Air Berlin last year, and so they're dumping that capacity in the marketplace at the moment. But it's never been a cheaper time to fly across Europe. And if you're the lowest cost producer, ultimately it's good for our business. And when you think about the competition, one of the things we talk about in the United States is whether there's enough competition, whether there's too much competition. You think this is the model? You never have enough competition. So anything that's good for the consumer. But it's a bit like, you know, it's, uh, Buffett says you wait until the tide goes out and see who's swimming, who's wearing swimming, who's wearing Speedos and who's naked. Right. You know, I was thinking of another... we got long johns on in Ryanair. Uh, Gordon Bethune, the former head of Continental, used to always say, you can only be as smart as your dumbest competitor. Are you the dumbest competitor in terms of driving everybody else out of business? Well, I'm Irish, so, you know, we set the, you know, we tend to be pretty dumb at the best of times anyway. <laughs> but, you know... Uh, we got the lowest costs. Uh, so whether, on everybody so else. whether that makes us the dumbest or the brightest boys in the class, well, the toughest competitor, we're certainly sure. going to be the ones who survive be better than anybody else. That profits will be down this year only because pricing is down. And that's the great strength of the Ryanair model. You know, we have very low costs, so, a bit like Southwest so here for years. So who are you trying to put out of business then? We're trying to carry 10 million more consumers this year, Aaron, at ever lower prices. And hey, if someone gets kind of uh, a bloody nose in the, as we serve our consumers with more choice and lower fares, that's tough. Um, separately, let's talk about the, the, the Boeing Max, uh, Max, yep. Max uh, 7, 737 Max Jet. Yeah. What's your take on what's happening here? I mean, I think it's not unusual. Boeing introduced new aircraft. They had similar issues with the 787 a couple of years ago with the lithium-ion batteries. They were grounded for a couple of months. You know, we have utmost confidence the plane is great. It's got 4% more seats. It's got 16% lower fuel costs, 40% lower noise emissions. I think it'll return to flying here in the States. In 2019? Aye, aye, June, July. It's pretty close, I think, to going back into service. I think it'll go back into service in Europe maybe about a month later than that. We had only five ordered for this summer. We have 50 next winter, so we've delayed the first five to the end of the summer schedule. We'll take all 50 of those planes next winter. What are your pilots saying? Uh, they've been through the simulator, uh, been through the... Love it. No issues. Uh, they've, and they've gone through the simulators. We put the, they've simulators been over. Simulators with, with the new We are the, as, as far as I know, we're the only airline in uh, Europe that has actually the MAX simulator. Uh, so we have the first one now. We have two more coming at the end of the year. And did okay. you invest in that before or after? I know, oh, before. I mean, we ordered these things. We ordered the simulators about three years ago. Uh, you need to have the simulators there. But you can put them into an NG, an existing NG simulator and recreate the same uh, issue. There was a software, seems to be there was a software problem. I think Boeing have fessed up on that. They're addressing the issue. I think the good thing is that pilots all around the world know what the issue is right. now. I think it may have been an issue that pilots didn't know what the software what's problem was. What's your confidence was. in Boeing and what's your confidence in the FAA? I mean, you know, Boeing are a partner of ours. We fly 450 Boeing aircraft. You know, Boeing have a 100-year record of making the best air commercial aircraft in the world. You know, a Boeing aircraft takes off every second of every day. I have utmost confidence in Boeing. I think they care. they've handled it reasonably well. Once there was a known problem, they've grounded the aircraft, they've come out and they've identified what the issue is. I think there's learnings for the FAA. Maybe the regulatory process with the manufacturer was a bit too close. Maybe there does need to be a little bit more scrutiny. But, you know, ultimately, we have great confidence in Boeing, in the FAA, and in EASA, which is but the European regulator. But you put more of the blame, it sounds like, on the FAA in terms of not doing something sooner uh, and their, their relationship with Boeing as opposed to Boeing itself, which I, I find surprising. It's an industry where we try not to kind of blame. It's about learning. How do you learn and how do you eliminate, make sure the problem doesn't recur? It's about safety. And safety is always, you know, there's a kind of... We try not to have a blame culture in the airline industry. We try to have a, you know, an educational culture, learn from the mistake and make sure it doesn't happen again. 
Michael, your stock was down earlier just on concerns because you were expecting some of these planes this summer. As yep. a result of not getting them, your fuel costs are going to be higher and you're not going to be able to bring as many passengers, uh, travel as many passengers as you That's had true. anticipated. What, what's the economic impact? Well, I think it's going to cost about a million passengers through the summer. You know, we would like to have the first six aircraft in. Also, the 50 aircraft, we were start due to take the next 50 starting in August, September, October, Becky. We think they won't arrive until maybe December, January, February. So there's a little bit of a delay. But this is critical. I mean, we think for the next four or five years in Ryanair, we have the lowest costs in Europe, but that, that cost base, unit cost X fuel, would be flat to slightly down, and that's driven by these aircraft. I mean, I have never before seen a step change in technology that gives you 4% more seats at 15% less fuel. And as the Europeans, you know, are increasingly focused on environmental taxes and things like that, the fact that we have the greenest, cleanest aircraft in the industry, and certainly in Europe, will be critical to us trying to avoid a lot of these environmental, crazy environmental taxes. Are Boeing you? is going to pay you or compensate okay. you for... I think we'll have, we're having a discussion with Boeing. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not quite sure we discussed it, uh, uh, but I think they will have to sensitively approach the losses, or, you know, the, right. the, the million passes we've lost this year. Does that come in the year. form, you think, of, of future discounts? Does it come in the for, form of actual cash payments how, do, how does do you think how do you think that's going to manifest itself not just at your own airline but this is this is going to happen across across the globe at many airlines I, I'm, look, I'm always much more interested in the cost of aircraft so you know we have three billion in cash the last thing i need is somebody else's i don't need cash compensation but you know i would like to see um some movement from boeing on the pricing of aircraft and on future orders i mean you know we're talking to boeing at the moment now about uh, placing another order for aircraft now, Boeing, I don't think you have the headspace at the moment to talk about future growth. We do. Um, but, you know, I would be, Ryanair would certainly be at the front of the queue once the MAX is back flying about, you know, let's talk about the next order right. because we want to demonstrate confidence in Boeing. This is a great aircraft and our customers are going to love it. What do you think it would take for Warren Buffett to invest in the airlines in Europe? Uh, probably a quick coffee with Becky, and you know she has seems to have more influence on them than anybody else. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I suspect the same kind of environment as he's seen here in the states. I think it, once he begins to see, as in North America, consolidation has played out. The airlines have more control over, or more pricing right. power, more control over their costs, and you're into a much more sensible industry which ultimately Europe is moving towards, uh, for, you know, we're running about 10 years behind North America, then I think lots of investors will want to uh, invest in this right. industry. We're leading but that Europe's process. It's always been a more open skies environment. And then you have the, the Middle Eastern Airlines, which I know there's a big debate about how much they're still being subsidized. That, that's a debate happening here in the U.S., and I believe it's a debate happening in Europe and elsewhere. That only affects the long-haul market. Like within right. Europe and the European Union, you know, we have open skies. But, you know, that consolidation is playing itself out. You're at the end of the kind of uh, the crazy capacity additions because nobody... I mean, Ryanair in every market which we operate in Europe, and we're in the mall, we have a $9.99, $10 lead-in fare. There's no price point at which some startup or niche carrier is going to get in underneath uh, us. And I think what's happening, you know, in terms of investment in the airline, like we've indicated our conference this morning, we've announced a 700 million euro share buyback. We'll buy back those shares at these prices because these are very attractive prices to be investing in Ryanair. Okay, Michael, thank you. Aaron, thank Mohammed, you. this is all about people that like fly with other people on jets. You know what I mean? They're, they're like, <laughs> I the, fly the Ryanair. The best general coffee. public the is best coffee. the seat can be? What do you think the, the smallest the pitch can be? Have you studied that? Uh, we've increased it with the new aircraft. What's actually happening, the seat technology is the seats are getting slimmer. Right. So you have these slimline seats that I mean, our seat pitch is now up to 31, 30, 31 inches, gone up from 29. I mean, you know, our, our seats are ridiculously roomy at this stage. I'm trying to find some way. Can of, we tone down the yellow? On I got to keep you awake so that you're <laughs> buying coffee, Lavazza coffee, filter coffee, buying more sandwiches. Paying for the bathroom? The last. No, no, no. We, <laughs> you joked the about The bathrooms that. have always been free on Reiner and <laughs> will continue to be free, that. Becky. Yeah. We put in a bunch of paid toilets here. You didn't go in the. Uh, <laughs> but they're going to be putting technology. I couldn't, I couldn't afford the rates here, Joe. Did you see these articles about the technology? We're low cost these guys are going to put. They're gonna put are you going to put cameras in the back of your, uh, the back of your seats? No, we that? saw that. I mean, there's some in, uh, investigation going on about uh, Congress over here, uh, but that, that uh, in flight entertainment system. Right. Some kind of two-way two-way cameras and you'll be able really? to surveillance. Well, the idea yeah. is that you'll be able to just press a little button and then order food and stuff, and they'll just bring it to your. It's supposed to make everything easier. Why do they have to see you?
Because you'll talk to them. It'll be like a Sky I, you'll I, Skype. To I, them. I'm happy to say Ryanair don't have any in-flight entertainment <laughs> systems. So, <laughs> right. But no there will be no surveillance in Ryanair. Is it just still, it's only your credit card. It's still we airline for. food that, that they deliver, though? It's still airline oh, food well, that they deliver. Okay. Yes. Why don't they work on that? Yeah, people, they fly with strangers, Mohammed. I mean, people that you don't know are, like, sitting in the seat next. It's so weird. You don't, don't try it.